These are 10 of the best games on Xbox Game Pass that you have to play, featuring a few iconic titles as well as some that you may never heard of. First, let's start off with probably one of the most obvious recommendations, and that's Halo. But not Halo Infinite, it's the Halo Master Chief Collection. This is probably one of my favorite games on Xbox of all time. It's been out for years, like it came out, I think was it 2015 or something like that on the Xbox One, where they remastered all of the old Halo games from Halo 1 all the way through to Halo 4. In total, there's now six Halo games that are playable within the Master Chief Collection because they've then went on and added Halo 3 ODST and also the Halo Reach remaster, which is absolutely insane. But to take it to the next level, they even added recent patches for the Xbox Series S and X. So it's got better performance, 4K graphics, better visuals and graphics overall compared to when the OG launched way back on the Xbox One. I actually remember this game launching and it had an awful start. There was server issues, it was glitchy, there was loads of FPS drop. It was probably one of the worst Xbox games ever made, but fast forward almost 10 years and it really is an iconic title. This is a thousand percent worth downloading and also just playing from start to finish. Just starting on Halo 1, going through all of those old games, especially if you never experienced them back on the Xbox 360 generation, going through all those old games and then obviously concluding with some of the newer titles like Halo 5 and obviously Halo Infinite. Obviously Halo 3, in my opinion, is probably one of the best Halo games ever made, but the Halo 2 remaster in particular is very good inside of this Master Chief collection. It had the most work done to it out of all of the titles. It had a complete new textures, complete new sound design and also even new cinematic cutscenes for the single player story. Obviously there's all of the single player stories that you can play through in the Master Chief Collection but there's all of the multiplayer maps that you can play within playlists inside of the matchmaking. Of course you could just focus all of your time and effort onto the single player story campaigns within these Halo games but do not forget that there's also all of the maps on multiplayer. You get access to all of the maps in the old games that are now also remastered and reimagined but inside of playlists. So it's super fun. You can be matchmaking and one minute playing Halo 2 next minute you're playing Halo 3, then you're playing Halo Reach, then you're playing Halo 1. Very nice way of just switching up the overall vibe and mechanics of the gameplay. You can also play all of the single player missions with a friend, either split screen or with online co-op that just makes it so much more fun. Talking about having fun with a friend, next up we've got Ghost Recon Wildlands. This has four player co-op where you and three friends can complete all of the missions inside of this open world game. Now Ghost Recon Wildlands was probably one of my favorite games from the past generation. I personally played it on the PC. There is a newer version of Ghost Recon as well that is a little bit more optimized for the new consoles. But I personally think Ghost Recon Wildlands is the stronger and better title. Plus this one is available on Xbox Game Pass. The other one you have to purchase it with a real life money. Basically you play as a group of US Marines that are trying to take down drug cartels and gangs in Bolivia. The country has become increasingly unstable as all of the Mexican drug cartels known as the Santa Blanca have gained control of several different regions of the country. Now the coolest thing about this open world map is yes it's open world you can literally just grab a helicopter, fly around, do whatever you like. But also each of the zones of the maps have completely different feels. There's a snowy area, there's more of a sandy area, there's like a jungle area, a more of a sort of countryside area. There's loads of different regions that you can explore, which then also changes the types of missions that you do. Because fundamentally, all of the missions are the same. You sort of have a main VIP target that you've got to either capture, uh, interrogate or wipe out. And then you've got to obviously take out all of the generic foot soldiers along the way, or you have to go in and recon and research. So you've got to get some information or plant a bomb or do something like that and then exit out of the base. But by having these diverse environments, it's not just all being set in like a Mexican sort of desert and you're having these jungle forests and the snow really does help mix it up. And also your approach to some of the missions. One of the coolest features too is the day to night cycle. So this game has got a, a night time, which does impact how the AI have visibility and actually see you. And if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure the weather also also influences how the AI react and respond to your approach to the mission. So if it's foggy, super heavy rain, it's windy, this will change how the AI position themselves outside of the base, plus also their visibility for seeing you. I'm 100% sure that's how it works, if I remember correctly. I've never played Ghost Recon Wildlands on my own. I always preferred to play it with a bunch of friends in a squad. This just made it so much more fun. I feel like you would get bored playing it on your own. You could do it on your own, like super hardcore, like the hardest setting, uh, disable all of the hood elements, so it's just literally you and the world. But I found it just much better with a bunch of friends because you could literally feel like some military marine You could like communicate and be like sniper one taking him down man moving in it, it just made it feel so much more like an action movie that you were like living out inside of the game Which I personally found made it much more enjoyable and also hilarious when you were flying around different vehicles Crashing cars blowing stuff up and just making mistakes next up We've got a bit more of a chill game, which is Lego Star Wars Skyfall Saga now 
how about a year or so ago, there was huge hype over the Lego Star Wars remaster for the complete saga that obviously had all of the uh, prequels and then the main sort of New Hope, Empire Strikes Back era of Star Wars all remastered for the Xbox Series X and also the PS5. I personally purchased this game back, I think it was in 2022 and really enjoyed reliving some of these missions from my childhood. I did think the original Lego Star Wars complete saga was a bit better. Some of the gameplay mechanics had been heavily changed on the remaster, but it was cool to just see it reimagined on a new platform. Now, obviously that game can sometimes be quite expensive unless you can pick it up in a sale. And fundamentally, you know, it is just a Lego game. It's cool for a few hours here or there, but you're not really going to play it hardcore. If you're a younger viewer, you might do like when I was a kid, I guess I did play it quite hardcore. But as you get a little bit older, you do fancy a little bit of a Lego game, but for a quick blast for 30 minutes for about like a blast from the past sort of nostalgia. Well, thankfully there is the Lego Star Wars Skyfall Saga available on Xbox Game Pass that has been updated and refreshed for the Xbox Series S and X. So again, you can expect better performance and it does leverage the power of your console, even though this was released back in 2019 before the next gen consoles uh, were ever on store shelves. And you can have that childhood fun that you may crave from a Lego game, but obviously for free within your Xbox Game Pass subscription. And it's all of the new movies. Obviously these are the worst movies because Disney made them, <laughs> but the game, the Lego game is still pretty good fun. Graphically looks good. And it's definitely worth downloading because it isn't too big and it won't take up too much space on your console. While we're talking about Star Wars games, let's talk about a triple A Star Wars game, which is Star Wars Jedi, wait, is it? No, Fallen Order. <laughs> Jedi Survivor was the one that came out last year. Let's try that again. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is available on Xbox Game Pass and has also had a next generation update and patch. This hasn't done anything too crazy to the performance of the Xbox Series S and X version. You can now play it at 4K 30 FPS, nice and solid, but it does also have a performance mode that drops it down to 1440p at 60 FPS, which is way better than obviously the Xbox One version that we previously had. Graphically, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is a stunning game and also the storyline is fantastic. It was probably one of the best Star Wars games released in a very, very long time. And then obviously we've now got Jedi uh, Survivor, which is the sort of follow up to it, the sequel that came out last year that is also a brilliant game and took everything to the next level, especially with the graphics. Honestly, the new one, the graphics was amazing. Like all of the lens flares and how cinematic the cutscenes look, thoroughly enjoyed it. But if you don't want to drop like $40 on the new game, you can definitely experience Jedi Fallen Order and get an overall experience of what the franchise is like, see if you actually like it. And of course, obviously play the first game in the storyline so then you can jump in to the newer title if you get invested into it. Next up, we've got Ori and the Will of the Wisp. This is a completely different style of game to all of the other ones in this video. It's actually a platformer game and it's also very chill and relaxed. I personally played Ori and the Blind Forest a whole ton back in the day when that first came out. That was the first game in the franchise. And one of my favorite things about the Ori franchise in general is the peaceful soundtrack that's in the background. I think the art style is stunning, especially if you've got like a nice television, like an OLED TV. My word, th this game's perfect at showing off OLED technology because you've got all of the dark elements and bright elements on the same sort of screen at once. You've got like the perfect black levels where the pixels will be turned off and the beautiful saturated colors of all of the levels and the glow that goes around obviously the little character that you run around as. The art style of this franchise is just stunning. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite art styles out of all of the games I've ever played. Plus the soundtrack. I'm just a bit of a sucker for a bit of music in a video game. I don't know if it's because I like playing guitar and stuff like that. Honestly, this is like amazing. It's just perfect. It really does bring you down at the end of a long day. Most games hype you up too much. You know, you jump into a game of Warzone and it doesn't then help you sleep because you're like, oh, oh, mate, oh, oh, let's, one more game, one more game. Whereas Ori in the Blind Forest or Will of the Wisps, whichever one you want to play, they're both on Game Pass. Just brings you down at the end of the day. You have a nice little, if you've got a nice sound bar as well or some headphones, enjoy the soundtrack, complete some puzzles. You also have to think a little bit too with your approach to the missions. Like it's not just one of those fast paced platformers or a bit like Mario where you jump about and avoid a couple things. There is actually a little bit of thought that has to go to completing each of the sort of missions that you're trying to traverse through. And then you can obviously enjoy the storyline. I found the storyline to be quite good. At first, when I played these games, I thought I wasn't really gonna be attached too much to the story because you're just this weird little character. But within like the first hour or two of the first game, my word, the storyline was so gripping. I don't think there's ever been a game where I felt so attached to the characters, especially in the platforming genre. Now we're gonna have a little bit of a throwback to an Xbox 360 title 
title that has actually been remastered to an extent for the Xbox Series S and X. Now this is Fallout 3. This is literally the exact same game from the Xbox 360, one of the best games from the Xbox 360 generation. This is available on Xbox Game Pass, but it has had a resolution and FPS update. So even though you're playing the old game that's identical on the Xbox Series S and X, whether you own it on disc or whether you just boot it up through Xbox Game Pass because it is included on there, it now has 4K resolution at 60 FPS. So just literally this increase in resolution, basically from like 720p or whatever it used to run at on the Xbox 360 HD. You now basically increasing it from there to 4K resolution has brought the overall fidelity of the game up to like it's a next generation game. It looks absolutely fantastic. Then couple that with the increased performance at 60 FPS. It's super stable. The experience is fantastic. And this is like one of the best games of all time, Fallout 3. So you can experience like when gaming was actually super good. On Xbox Game Pass, there is also Fallout New Vegas, which unfortunately hasn't had the same treatment. I think it's had a slight FPS boost. Like it runs a little bit better. I think at like 45, 60 FPS, but resolution hasn't been bumped up. So graphically, it still looks like an Xbox 360 game. They did the same thing for Red Dead Redemption, where they all they did was just increase the resolution and also the FPS that the game ran at. And it literally looked like they remastered the whole game by Rockstar, but it was just the Xbox 360 version now running at 4K. And that increase in fidelity to all of the textures just completely changed the overall experience. And it's very good, especially if you did play Fallout 3 back in the day, allowing you to go back and play it and it doesn't ruin any of your childhood memories. Sometimes when you go back to these Xbox 360 games, the graphics are just so bad or the performance is like 25 FPS. And you're like, I can't remember it being this bad. And it just sort of destroys and tarnishes some of those fond memories you have as a child. Whereas this just still preserves it and it feels nice and fresh and up to date. Switching our focus over to a brand new game. Next up, we've got Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now I feel like this is a specific title for whether you like this genre of game, but it's definitely worth installing just for playing it for two hours or something to fly over your house. So Microsoft Flight Simulator uses real life map data to create the entire world within the simulator. And it's very accurate. You can literally find where your house is on the map and fly over it. And the house will be like a bit of a generic texture model, but the overall layout of your housing estate or the road structures will be identical. I flew over the studios here and it had the exact shape of the warehouse that we're in, like to a T, with even like the car park area and even some rubbish that we had in the car park pit, like some containers and stuff like that. It, it mapped all of that in and it looked like 90% as to what it does in real life. So even if you can't stand simulator games, just for the cool factor of seeing your own house or your local area inside of the video game, I think it's definitely worth checking out. And this alone probably makes it one of the coolest games on Xbox Game Pass. On the topic of favorite things that have ever been made, next up we've got Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remaster. Now I could put something like Forza Horizon 5, Forza Horizon 4, it's one of the best racing games on Xbox Game Pass, but you already know that. I, I hate these game lists that people make and they go, I'm gonna tell you some of the best games, and they're like, Forza Horizon, Horizon 5 and you're like, mate, everybody who owns an Xbox has played that game, but not all of them have played Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. Now this is another OG game from the Xbox 360 that was probably one of my favorite racing games as a kid. You gotta bear in mind, Forza Horizon only launched towards the end of the Xbox 360. So before that, we only had Forza Motorsports, which was track racing. So your only real free roam racing game was either Test Drive Unlimited 2 or a Need for Speed game. And this is when Need for Speed was actually good before it went rubbish, which was basically on the Xbox One generation. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit was probably one of the last decent Need for Speed games. I have very fond memories of it. It doesn't have the biggest map in the world, but this was the first game to introduce the cops versus street racer story arc type thing where you could play on both sides. So you could either play as the cop car or you could play as the bad boy street racer, which was uh, the first time they did that. And this game's now available on the next generation series S and X with better graphics and also better performance. It now does run at 4K 60 FPS. When it did first come out on the next gen, it had terrible reviews views because it was running at like 4k 30 fps at best it was atrocious performance it's actually worse than the xbox 360 version that did actually run at 60 fps albeit with a worse resolution so at least now with that new update it does run at 4k 60 fps so it is the ultimate version of this title and it's something a little bit different than just playing forza horizon there are also a whole bunch of other need for speed games available on xbox game pass ultimate because of the ea play integration but they're not really worth playing that they're absolutely
Another classic game from the Xbox 360 is Skate 3. Now again, I want this list to be something a little bit different. You may have never played some of these games. You might be one of my younger uh, viewers. It's sort of like the Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X is their first generation of Xbox. So you've not been exposed to absolute beast of a titles like this one. So Skate 3 is a skateboarding game that is open world. You can completely design your character. You can customize all of the clothes, how they look, what they do. And then you can just go around the map popping different tricks. It does have a main storyline that you can play through but you could just literally go around in free mode, leveling up, doing different uh, stick tricks and just progressing that way. Over the last decade or so, there probably hasn't been a skateboarding game as good as Skate 3. Nothing that's came anywhere near to the caliber of title this is. This was one of my favorite Xbox 360 games as a kid. I pretty much completed the storyline and got very, very far in it. And it's cool that you can now play it on the next generation consoles if you still own the disc or just through Xbox Game Pass. The final game on this list is probably quite controversial within the gaming community and that is Rainbow Six Siege. Now some people love this game like a real hardcore fan of it and other people just completely hate it thinking it's just a little bit overrated. Now I probably sit in the middle of these two opinions but the reason why I'm impressed by this game is to see how it has leveled up from its initial release back in 2016 I think it was so I seen that release when I was still at school and it was a cool little tactical shooter with a couple of maps you know nice graphics it did mostly what it promised from the E3 trailer that me and my friends were absolutely mind blown by the graphics were amazing Amazing. Obviously the graphics weren't as good when it finally came out. It had a little bit of a rubbish launch just like every game in 2014, 15, 16 sort of did. But to see it go from that point of mega disappointment to now this quite complete flushed out game, I think it's quite impressive. And they've sort of evolved its model into more of a live service where they add different maps, different characters, different microtransactions and things for sure. But at least the base game is now free within sort of your PS Plus subscriptions and your Xbox Game Pass. But also they keep improving the performance of the games and the graphics of the games like this does have a next generation update for the Xbox Series S and X. It has fantastic performance on the Xbox Series X, specifically even in 4K mode. And I think the graphics look amazing. And also I do like this style of multiplayer game where you have one life where you go in, you've got a complete objective and you do need a degree of team play. Now I feel like where people have a bad experience with this game is because they're not playing it with friends. Just like when you play Counter-Strike, if you try and play Counter-Strike with a load of random people in like non-competitive mode, just in a standard unranked lobby, it's the worst game in the world. It's just full of people screaming down the mic that you're an idiot, that you're a moron, that you're this and that. And there's no coordination of how to actually go in, plant the bomb, defuse the bomb, etc. Exact same premise here with Rainbow Six Siege. You need to be either in a team with a party chat where you and your friends are the whole squad or at least you make up about 50 to 60 percent of said squad and you go in obviously it's 5v5 and you complete all of the objectives this is where you're going to get the most value out of a game like this and also truly appreciate this genre of title and then eventually go into competitive mode to level it up and then again take it a little bit more seriously i really like team play games like this i was always more of a fan of battlefield than call of duty because of the squad based gameplay those old battlefield games used to have before they messed it up in 2042 where it didn't matter what class you were you could just revive everybody back in the day you used to have like a medic a support a sniper etc and everyone would play their role and you would talk in a chat and then you would dominate all the different objectives so i've always preferred that more than just running around and slide canceling like an absolute dork so it depends what your vibe is as to whether you would actually enjoy rainbow six siege but i think it's a pretty solid triple a title and it's great to see it on xbox game pass now obviously these are 10 of the best games available right now on xbox game pass but there are hundreds of titles to choose from so you should check out this video next where i tell you seven more titles that you don't want to miss.